Welcome again, my friends, to another weekend worship video from the Parish of St. Anne here in Toronto, Ontario. My name is Don Byers, and I serve as a priest and pastor of this incredible parish. It's such a great place to be, and I hope you come on down and join us for our prayer and worship as well. My friends, it is hard to believe that we are already at Thanksgiving weekend. It seems like this year is going by so fast, but the weather seems to be fooling us because it's warm. But guess what? I'm not going to complain about that. It's great weather to have. My friends, since it is Thanksgiving weekend, our liturgy and our worship will be focusing a lot about thanks, what it means to give thanks. And so, my friends, I invite you to ponder that question as we pray together this day. As always, my friends, I invite you to join us as well for worship at 9 o'clock on Sundays on Zoom and also at 10.30 in person here at the church and on Zoom for our celebration of Eucharist. Eucharist is an opportunity where we can give thanks to God as well. You may or may not know this, but the word Eucharist actually means to give thanks. It's a Greek word. So it seems fitting to celebrate the Eucharist on Harvest Thanksgiving. My friends, I invite you to find a space where you can be comfortable to enter into this time of prayer, to listen to the marvelous music, and to hear our wonderful readers read, and just to contemplate and reflect. And without further ado, let us begin our prayer with a big opening collect. Let us pray. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family today and in generations to come may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen.
from the book of Joel. Do not fear, O soil, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green, the tree bears its fruits, the fig tree and the vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rains for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain, as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. The other day I was walking up Gladstone Avenue to church and I started thinking a lot about giving thanks. Thanking God for the many gifts and treasures that we receive. The reason why I thought about this is I often find myself in my prayer asking God to help me or God to do some favor for someone that I know. And I realized how little I actually give God thanks for the many wonderful gifts and blessings I have received and that I've seen others receive. And so I thought a lot about this the other day, and I decided, it was interesting, I decided to come into the church here and just spend some time just giving God thanks. In our culture today, I think we often are quick to always ask. We're often quick to seek out what we need and what we want, and we often forget the great time and energy that people give so that we can enjoy the treasures that we have. And I think we often turn to God, probably more so than what we realize, and ask God constantly to help us. Now, it's not a bad thing to turn to God and ask for help. We should all do that. That's a good thing. And God wants to provide and care for us. But I think it's also healthy to thank God and to thank those around us for the many blessings we receive. It's a good custom. It's a good practice. Because I think when we give thanks to God and to others, we begin to appreciate more fully the gifts we enjoy, the treasures we enjoy. Now, I don't know about you, but I often overlook the many wonders of this world, you know, such as the flowers that fill our sanctuary, the people that surround us. And I fail to see how God is working in and through them. Our church has a wonderful tradition of giving thanks. As I said in the beginning of the video, the word Eucharist, the term that we use for our Sunday celebration, is a word that comes to us from the Greek, meaning to give thanks. At the very heart of the Christian life is this great prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer in which we come before God as the people of God, and we offer the fruits of God's creation to God as a way of giving thanks. We follow in Jesus' great way of breaking bread and pouring wine and thanking God for the wonderful ways in which God has worked his salvation among us. This is why it's so important, and sometimes I think we forget this, this is why it's so important that we as Christians gather each week on Sundays to break bread and to drink the cup. Our celebration of Holy Eucharist is a central act of the Christian life. It's that moment or that time, it's just a simple hour of the week in which we pause 
we reflect and we give thanks. I wonder if we made our Sunday celebration of the Eucharist a greater priority in their life, maybe then we'll appreciate more fully the blessing that each of us are to one another and the gifts that we receive in this world. So my friends, I invite you, join us and give thanks on Sunday. Come and celebrate the Eucharist with us and let us pause daily, even daily, and thank God for his wonderful gifts to us. Amen. In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field, men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation, from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, my friends, it is so wonderful to be able to have you worship with us here at St. Anne's. I give God thanks and praise for you. You are a blessing to me and to this entire parish, and I'm so grateful for all of you who share in our ministry, whether it's a ministry of prayer or helping out with our community dinners or our choir or in our worship, whatever it is, I am grateful for you. My friends, we have some wonderful and exciting news that I want to share with you, some great events, but first and foremost, a wonderful announcement. As many of you heard last Sunday at the 1030 Eucharist, I am delighted to share that Bishop Andrew has appointed the Reverend Dr. Stephen Drakeford as an honorary assistant here at St. Anne's. Stephen has been an incredible priest. He served this diocese for over 30 years, and he brings a rich experience. Stephen was most recently the pastor at our neighboring church at Epiphany St. Mark uh, before retiring a year ago. I'm really delighted to welcome Stephen back into this community and to worship with us, to preach. And in fact, speaking of preaching, Stephen's going to be here this Sunday, Thanksgiving Sunday, to preach at St. Anne's. It'll be a delight to have him with us. 
Speaking of some important people, I also want to share with you that the following Sunday, October 17th, we will welcome our previous pastor, Gary Vandermeer, who will share with us his thoughts in a sermon on October 17th. I invited Gary to come back because I thought it would be important for all of us to be able to give Gary a proper farewell. As many of you know, Gary concluded his ministry right at the peak of the pandemic. And so we were unable to have a proper farewell for him. So do join us on Sunday, either in person here in the church on October 17th, either here in the church or on online on Zoom. Uh, it would be great to hear Gary share his message. I really value his ministry and feel grateful to be able to follow him and to continue the great work that Gary has done within this parish. But then we got a third exciting piece of news. On October 24th at four o'clock in the afternoon, Bishop Andrew will be visiting our parish and will be installing me as your pastor. These celebrations are important times. They're called the Celebration of New Ministry. And it's an important time for us as a parish to come together because it's not just about me, but it's about all of us and our shared ministry to the people of this area. So my friends, mark it on your calendars, visit our website at sanen.ca and register to join us. I hope to see all of you there. It will be great to have a lot a number of you with us to really be able to celebrate this joyous, joyous occasion and to also be surrounded by you in prayer as I embark on this great ministry with you. So that's October 24th at four o'clock in the afternoon. So do join us for that. Then, oh my gosh, this is quite the month for events. On Saturday, October 30th, we are going to be releasing our wonderful lessons and carols for the harvest festival known as give thanks a harvest festival of lessons and carols a number of people in the parish have been working very hard to put together music and scripture readings to help lead us through a meditation on the harvest festival so we will be releasing that video on october 30th and at 7.30 p.m. that night, we will have a watch party on Zoom to watch it and to really celebrate the wonderful gifts that we've received. So mark that on your calendar as well. Also, I encourage you to stay tuned to our website at saintanne.ca because I think a couple more events are going to be popping up here in the next couple weeks as well. I know I'm talking with uh, parishioner Peter Gorman about possibly getting a hike going again. We're talking about maybe hiking out at Toronto Islands. So we're finalizing details for that. So stay tuned, check out our website at saintanne.ca for information about the events I shared with you today and also many other events, which I realized I forgot one and I need to share it because it's an important ministry. And it's a ministry in which we need your help on October 17th, we will also have our monthly community dinner here at St. Anne's. It's an important ministry in which we provide a wonderful meal to our friends within this community. And it's a ministry that many have invested much time and energy to. So if you're able to help out in, in ways small or great with that, please let us know. You can email admin at stanne.ca to let Mary Lou know that you're interested in helping. My friends, I'm really grateful, and honestly, I mean that, grateful for all the wonderful ministry that you do. This church is about all of us, and you are a blessing to us. My friends, know of my prayers for you. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may God let God's face shine upon you always. God bless.